The Lord is risen. He is risen this, is, <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So, uh, I, <clears throat> are were there any announcements on the board? I didn't hear. No, there are no announcements on the board, other than the announcement that says, reminder that we're continuing with the more modern version of the Lord's Prayer when we... Uh, go to uh, be communion. And I'll point out, uh, there is going to be an organ concert next Sunday at uh, <clears throat> 13 Mile and, and Farmington Road uh, in Antioch Lutheran Church. Uh, <clears throat> I got that announcement yesterday. You can read more about it in your bulletin that you'll get next Sunday if you're thinking about going to an organ concert. It should be pretty good. Uh, Ann Buland, who is playing in it, uh, is one of the people that comes and rings the bells here for us. So you'll know somebody at least that's uh, playing the concert. If not, uh, <clears throat> so let's continue. Rise in body and spirit. So we op sing the opening hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, it's time for Munchkin Minute. Everybody else can stand. No, uh, just have a seat. Yeah. Well, I wonder what we're going to have to deal with today. Just uh, three? Ah, okay, that's fine. I'll just uh, give my attention to, all, to you folks. Oh, thank you. Oh, pastor didn't tell me how far down this was. Oh. He sits on the higher one? Oh, I want to do it the right way then. I'll, I'll get back up to the higher one. Oh, thank you. Is this better? I don't know everybody's names, so maybe we could find out everybody's names. Start, please. Okay. Reese? Okay. Do you sell pieces? No. And your name? Rowan. Good to meet you. And? Jen. Okay. Let's see what's in the bag. Oh, look, it's a whiteboard. How handy. Yeah, I just read something on the internet uh, earlier this week that I could probably use this whiteboard in my Munchkin Minute here. So let's see what we can do with this. These, you write on these things, right? Okay, so let's say we're going to call this Road to Emmaus. If that sounds familiar, you'll hear more about that later. And on that road, let's see, that put that here. On that road, there are two people walking, talking to each other, let's see, as they go to Emmaus, which is this way. And uh, <clears throat> so as they're walking and talking about all the things that happened in Jerusalem 
the recent days, right after the uh, death and resurrection of Jesus, they're talking all about it, and all of a sudden, somebody else comes up to them. Now, that's somebody else, it's Jesus, but don't tell them. Um, So we're going to draw Jesus so that you know he's different than they are. Uh, That's supposed to be a big coat and legs. And of course, Jesus has a halo. Oh, so anyway, uh, they're walking and and Jesus is talking to them about the things that are in Scripture. Uh, And for those, for you folks, uh, you may not know what Scripture means, but that's the same thing as the Bible. You know what the Bible is, don't they, Mom? (laughs) Okay, good. So uh, we're going to put down a couple of things here. We're going to put down Bible here. Can you see? Boy, my writing is awful. Okay, so that we have the Bible there. And then we have another thing down here. And we have, and, and what do we have towards the end of this service? We have communion, don't we? We have communion. So, um, and we're going we're gonna to put down here bread. Mmm, not good. And wine, which is what we have in communion. And Jesus was talking to them about that, too. They still didn't know who Jesus was. Isn't that crazy? But anyway, <clears throat> so what we can learn from this is that the Bible, oh, I almost forgot the most important part. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, after they get to Emmaus, the men say, why don't you stay with us, sir? You look like you might be hungry and famished. Why don't you sit with us and have a meal? And so... Jesus, and they still didn't know who he was. And, they, and so they said, and Jesus said, okay, I'll, I'll sit with you and have a meal. So, um, <clears throat> and during that time, they're talking, they're, the story says in the, in the gospel, it says that their, their mind, their bodies were burning for some reason, inside burn. Once you get heartburn, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But, you know, you don't have that problem right now. Uh, uh, right, Mom? Okay, good. So, but their hearts are burning. So we're going to put that over here. Burning. Burning. And, um, boy, that's hard to read. Whew. Um, So what this says is bread and wine. Believe it or not, that's what it says. But the thing that they find out in the story that once they have the bread and wine, once they have the break the bread at the meal, they realize that the man they were talking to is Jesus. And so bread and wine, especially the bread part, when we have our bread at the end of the worship we have today, we'll know that Jesus is here. Because when we break bread in Jesus' name, Jesus is with us. And so we can remember that here. Jesus. Okay. So what we can learn from this is that when we read the Bible, it can give us some good feelings, some what we call burning in our our body, but good feelings. We read our Bible and it tells us good things. And when we have the communion at the end of the day, at the end of the worship, we'll know that Jesus is indeed right there with us. You won't see him, just like these two guys didn't see him, but you'll know that Jesus is there. So, any questions? No? Oh, okay. Well, all right then. I'll tell you what. You can go fight over who gets to use this one the most. (laughs) But enjoy, and thank you very much. I may call on Stu here. Oh, pardon my view. We will continue with the readings. Oh, after the choir anthem. That's not in my book. Sorry.
A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. A reading from First Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you who have been born anew not of perishable, but imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while we we walk along? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there this day? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, Some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels and said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, 
and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together and they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I bring you greetings from uh, the other licensed ministers in our synod to our siblings here at Celebration in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We have before us this morning one of the most vivid and insightful accounts of our Lord's appearance after his resurrection. Luke is the only one of the four Gospels writers to include this story. And it's a story that reveals to us not only something about who we are, but how Jesus opens our eyes to see him for who he is and about how we can come to know him. The journey to Emmaus is both a literal and spiritual journey. On one hand, it recounts the story of two disciples who after the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord walked seven miles from Jerusalem to their village of Emmaus. And on the other hand, it outlines for us the journey that we all take from not recognizing who Jesus is, to understand what the scriptures say about him, to recognize him for who he is, and finally, to our living witness of what we have experienced. Notice with me as we again celebrate our Lord's resurrection this morning, some things about this passage. Jesus seeks us out. Although the disciples knew who Jesus was, they did not recognize him. They knew a lot about him. They had been witnesses to all the things that had happened in Jerusalem. And they had heard, no doubt, on many occasions, the things that Jesus had testified about himself. Yet they were not able to recognize Jesus when they met him. Now, there are several reasons, possibly, for the, uh, why they didn't recognize Jesus. Maybe Jesus didn't want them to recognize him. Jesus likely had a purpose in blinding their eyes from reality. Jesus is not being cruel here. His gradual revelation of himself allows them to learn certain lessons about trusting God's promises. The disciples had been told about these events many times, but they still hadn't believed. The events that they had expected didn't happen. The two had the preconceived idea who Jesus was what he had come to do, and how he should do it. But when things didn't turn out like they thought they should, they dismissed the whole thing as a failure, as misplaced hope and trust. But we know that while God always has a plan, we are not always privy to that plan. When things don't turn out like we expect after we pray, instead of giving up and admitting defeat, perhaps we would be wise to see things differently to see maybe if maybe God is up to something that we just don't understand. Now, these two disciples also had little faith. They had heard the reports of the women who went to the tomb. They had seen the empty tomb for themselves, and yet they still had not believed. The supernatural working of God to raise Jesus from the dead was outside of their paradigm. They had never seriously considered who Jesus was. And we must be careful not to make that same mistake, to discount what God has done simply because we can't explain it or understand it. While God often uses natural things to accomplish his will, he also does things we can neither explain or understand. These two disciples knew something had happened, but it was beyond their level of faith and understanding to see things as they truly were. And just because they knew about Jesus doesn't mean that they knew him. Just because they could see him does not mean that they could see who he was. Many people know who Jesus is. 
They have heard about him, read about him, sometimes use his name, and maybe even claim to know him. They wouldn't recognize him, though, if they saw him. Their eyes have not been opened. Knowing about him and knowing him are two different things. Now notice here that Jesus opens our eyes. In verse 27 of today's gospel, it says that the be- the- then beginning with Moses and from all the prophets, Jesus interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And while we don't know the specific passages that Jesus used, we know he opened to them the scriptures with a view towards showing them how all of the Old Testament pointed to him as its fulfillment. Jesus perhaps began with Genesis 3:15, where God cursed the serpent, saying, I will put hostility between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And he, meaning Jesus, will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. We know that Jesus walked them through the entirety of Scripture, what we call the Old Testament, to show how it gave witness to who he was, why he had come, excuse me, and why it was necessary. I have this little book here called The Bible Code, Finding Jesus in Every Book of the Bible. I highly recommend it. I don't get commission. Jesus wanted them to see if they would only believe what the scriptures say about him. They'd understand why he came and why he had to suffer. They would have known who he was. Understanding scripture gives gives us testimony of who Jesus is. Now many people will try to tell you who Jesus is. They will tell you he is one of the many ways to get to heaven. They will tell you that he was a good man, a great prophet, a good teacher, or a rebel who defied the Roman authorities. But outside of a knowledge and understanding of scripture, we'll never get the proper understanding of who Jesus is. And when you, when you know and understand what the scriptures say, they will build your faith, and only through faith can you come to know Jesus. The truth of scripture about Jesus leads to a personal faith in Jesus. God prevented these two disciples from recognizing Jesus to convey a deep truth. Even if we were to see we still might not believe. We must trust the testimony of Scripture. Jesus tells us that we must have the scriptural truth to understand who he is. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Outside the Word of God, there's no reliable witness to who Jesus really is. The Scripture tells us the truth. Now look at verse verse 30, looking at verse 30 from today's reading in Luke. Jesus reveals himself as is shown in this painting above. It was only as they sat and had fellowship with Jesus that he disclosed himself to them. He revealed himself to those whose eyes he has opened through the truths of his word which he has been sharing with them. And it's not without significance that it is around the supper table that his disciples' eyes were opened. And they see Jesus for who he really is. After the resurrection, many of the appearances of Jesus are associated with table fellowship. It's true here in Luke 24. And also, it's true for in Jerusalem, as written in Acts. And my favorite is breakfast by the sea as the Gospel of John tells us. In the intimacy of fellowship, Jesus reveals himself to us. His working in our lives becomes clearer and his provision and protection come into focus. But when they recognized him, he disappeared. Fellowship with him is not going to depend on their ability to see him, but rather upon their taking him at his word. And notice finally what their response was once they had recognized him. When, our, our, when our, your eyes have been opened, you will want others to have their eyes opened. 
Can you imagine the excitement that they must have felt? They said to one another, did our, not our hearts burn within us while he was speaking to us on the road? Their encounter with Jesus had been emotional. It had stirred them on the inside. It had moved their very hearts. And once moved, they could not help but stare. That very hour, dark as it was, late as it was, dangerous as the road was, they left to go back to Jerusalem. They gave witness when they got there that Jesus was risen, that he had walked with them and talked with them and explained the scriptures to them. They broke bread at their table. All who have experienced the risen Savior should be moved to similar emotions. All who have come to know him should react the same way, despite any potential concerns for personal safety. We should not be able to contain it. And as we were reminded last week, Jesus told Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But those who believe in me without seeing are blessed. Pastor's final words were, blessed are those who come to believe. Have your eyes been opened to who Jesus is and what he has done for you? Do you know that he walks with you and he talks with you? Can you testify your presence in his life? Do you have fellowship with him? Has your experience with him been so real, so moving, so life-changing that it has caused you to tell others about him? What can be assured is that Jesus is with us whenever we receive the broken communion bread and with this blessing, the body of Christ given for you. And of all that God may or may not be doing in the world, this much is sure. Incarnate in the crucified, risen, and wound-sporting body of Christ, God still loves the world to death and shows up to do just that loving in many ways beginning with daily and endlessly calling the body of Christ into being through the word spoken and done, proclamation, baptism, and the supper, and then giving away all the bodies gathered up in the body of the only begotten, the great and astonishing miracle of the supper that is not some magic performed on simple bread and wine, but that fickle, faint-hearted, ordinary folk like us who eat and drink, become the flesh and blood of our Lord, his body, ready for sending into every corner of creation that suffered from God forsakenness. So what will you do with Jesus this morning? Please pray with me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, walk with us along our paths when we are afraid or lonely. Hold our hands and be our strength and comfort. As you have promised, carry our burdens and lighten our load so that we may proclaim your love throughout the world. Amen.
We'll confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Let us pray. Lord and Messiah, Jesus Christ, we rejoice in our baptism in your name. With our sins forgiven, may the gift of the Holy Spirit keep us faithful all the days of our lives. Set our minds on heavenly things. Heavenly Father, we know we are not able to repay you for all your goodness to us. We are your unworthy but happy servants. Hear our songs of thanksgiving in the presence of all your people. Set our minds on heavenly things. Heavenly Father, we revere your name for we have been died for by your son. You sent him to earth for us and you raised him from the dead. Our faith and expectation for eternal life are gifts of love from you. Set our minds on heavenly things. Lord Jesus Christ, our hearts burn within us when we celebrate a Holy Communion with you. May the Holy Spirit continue to make Christ known to us in the breaking of the bread. Set our minds on heavenly things. Though we study the word for a lifetime, Lord Jesus, we still need the Holy Spirit to prod us, tickle us, and sometimes scold us to make that leap of faith into the loving arms of the Heavenly Father. Set our minds on heavenly things. For those among us experiencing the frailty of this world's physical body, prolong, restore, and heal as you will those who are ill or homebound, as listed within our weekly celebration newsletter, as well as those newly named to before you. We pray for Mariah Kiss, Paul Reed, Paul Bisher, <clears throat> Ed Klosterhouse. Dave Rocker, John and Karen Call, Paul Bachels, Todd Sand, Connie Leach, Amanda Smith, Man Hefner, the Carruthers family, Bob Klish, Ram LaPointe, Barb and Jody Sam, Frank, Robbie Peterson, David Larson, Arturo Grigsby. Fill us with, set our minds on heavenly things. Be with those who have special needs <clears throat> known only to you, that they may hear your guiding voice. Today we lift up the prosecuted Christians worldwide, especially those in Turkey. We also pray for those who hold political office, those serving our country, Trevor Danielson, Robert Shambo, Tyler Miller, Ian Bramick, Calvin Heim, Owen Green, Ryan Lloyd, the people of our companion synods, the Mbulu Diocese in Tanzania, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Southeastern Pennsylvania Synod, our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Donald Kress and their staffs, the Celebration Lutheran Church Council and staff, and our pastor, the Reverend James Fogel. Set our minds on heavenly things. Open our hearts always so that we may always experience and rejoice in your grace. Today we especially give thanks for um, the members who have birthdays this week. Barbara Heidman, Ann Heckenen, Tim and Debbie Hepner, Dave, Deanna, Benjamin, and Catherine Holt. Set our minds on heavenly things. Turn the weeping of those who mourn the deaths of those whom they love into the joyful expectation of eternal life for all who belong to you. Today we especially lift up the families and friends of Paulette Cross and Shirley Williams. Set our minds on heavenly things. Here's now. 
Hear us now as we pray together for this community of faith. Gracious God, we the family of faith. with one another, the community and the world. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Now worship with our offerings.
Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and, sa- and <clears throat> charity and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. And praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ, and praise to you for your spirit poured out in all the nations. In in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all, for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O God of re- resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence, and reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice and peace and love with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars. We praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity. Amen. (laughs) Okay. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. The meal is ready. Come and partake. We'll do this side first, then that side. Are you assistant?
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love. Jesus, our risen Savior, as you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil. Keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. At this time, the, ch <clears throat> the children should leave and go to the Sunday school. And confirmation kids apparently get first in line for the whatever we have out there in the, in the, in the line. And we will sing the Church of Christ in every age.
Hallelujah. Go and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. 